glasses are worn by some, while others hide their eyes. Position. There's the target. Bomb away. There it goes. The fourth atomic bomb has been successfully detonated. First you see a blinding flash. Then comes the hemispherically shaped cloud that expands rapidly just behind the initial pressure wave. After the smoke clears, the characteristic mushroom cloud begins to form and shoot skyward. The first phase of the bomb burst produces the effect of an exploding derby hat, where the outside edge of the rim outlines the outermost front of the pressure wave at that instant. The cloudy rounded portion of the hat results from what is known as the cloud chamber effect. growing and rising above the clouds and smoke of the explosion. Although obscured during the first two seconds, the ball of fire is still visibly red hot. The maximum temperature reached at the center of this ball, shortly after detonation, exceeds even the temperature of the sun. The mushroom cloud gains altitude with amazing speed. In less than a minute, it has reached a point one mile above the Earth. Although a beautiful sight, this swirling, boiling mushroom cloud is certain death to any living thing which approaches too close to its edge. Radioactive fission particles, which resulted from the explosion, are dispersed throughout the cloud, and the deadly radiation from these particles must be avoided until the cloud is thoroughly diffused in the upper atmosphere. In this test, the Army, Navy, and civilian scientists wanted to find out just how lethal the cloud actually was at various altitudes and various distances from the center. Therefore, under the guidance of the Manhattan Project's Los Alamos Laboratories, the Army Air Forces installed specially designed filters on four of their B-17 pilotless drone planes so that an airplane could go into the very center of the cloud and bring back samples of the radioactive particles without danger to a human pilot. The Navy carried out a similar program utilizing F-6F drones based on the carrier Shangri-La. Only one drone was lost in the entire operation, although it is interesting to note that one other drone was temporarily lost for a considerable time after it had entered the smoke column because it was lifted 6,000 feet in the updraft before it could get through to the other side. As the cloud goes higher and higher, its rate of rise constantly decreases, and gradually the tremendous energy of the cloud begins to spend itself. Before the test, there was much speculation concerning the height to which the cloud would rise. Some predicted it might equal the 60 to 70,000 foot altitude reached by the previous Nagasaki cloud. However, at Bikini, the atomic cloud pushed itself to approximately 40,000 feet in a period of 10 minutes and stopped there. Explanation for failure to go higher lay in three facts. First, the atmosphere at Bikini was so wet that a considerable part of the cloud energy was absorbed by the moisture in the air. Second, the bomb was exploded close enough to the surface of the water to permit a certain part of the energy to be transformed into steam by a quenching action. And third, there were no large-scale fires, such as those encountered in burning Nagasaki, to feed the column after its initial rise. After the blast wave from the atomic explosion has spent itself, a reverse or suction wave is created as the air rushes back to the point of burst to fill the vacuum created there. As this air is heated in the vicinity of the fireball, it mixes and rises with the cloud column. Consequently, more air must keep coming into the center of the column, thus causing the effect you see in these pictures of the ship array, where the air rushing into the center of the cloud column carries with it the smoke of the burning ships. In order to obtain complete photographic records, 
photo aircraft pursued the cloud and took pictures of it as long as possible while it drifted slowly to the southwest. Gradually, it became diffused to such a degree that the chase had to be abandoned. One thing was certain, however, the dangerous radioactive particles in the cloud had become so widely scattered that no longer was there any danger to the surrounding area. In just a moment, you will see two views of the atomic bomb explosion taken from the observer ships approximately 20 miles from Bikini Lagoon. The second view provides another excellent example of the cloud chamber effect, which is produced for a very simple reason. The atmosphere at Bikini was almost saturated on July 1st, and when the pressure wave hit the air, it was compressed and heated. After the pressure front passed, the resultant expansion of the air cooled it below saturation point and caused formation of the expanding fog cloud you have seen in each view of the explosion. Mounted atop a 100-foot tower on Bikini Island, over three miles from the point of burst. On the water, you can see the shock wave coming toward the camera. Watch those palm trees in the foreground. The next three views of the burst were taken by other automatic cameras on top of towers located on other nearby islands in the lagoon. These cameras were started in motion by remote control radio signals emanating from aboard laboratory ships many miles away. notice in two of the scenes that a timing watch has been placed within view of the camera in order to afford the scientists a means of studying the speed relationships of the various phases of this explosion. The epicenter of the detonation of the bomb was approximately 650 yards from the USS Nevada at this point. The transports Gilliam and Carlisle, the destroyers Lamson and Anderson, and the Japanese cruiser Sakawa were sunk. The following ships sustained serious damage. Nevada, Independence, Salt Lake City, Skate, Y-O-160, L-E-M number one, Pensacola, Arkansas, L-S-T-52, Crittenden, and the A-R-D-C. The next ships to be seen were only slightly damaged. Nagato, Banner, Pennsylvania, Skipjack, Apagon, Parch, Butte, Dawson, Prince Eugen, Wilson, Stack, Rhine, Brule, Hughes, and the LCT-874. These were the first pictures taken from surface craft, which made their way into the target area as soon as the danger from radioactivity had passed. The three ships visible here are an APA, the Salt Lake City, and the Independence.